In 2001, Time Magazine featured French osteopath Jean-Pierre Barral and Visceral Manipulation in an article entitled The Innovators of the Next Wave of Integrative Medicine. Through interfacing with the body's deepest internal structures and systems, he has revolutionized manual medicine for allopathic and alternative therapists around the world. Based in Grenoble, France, Jean-Pierre is the author of a dozen books, including the groundbreaking Visceral Manipulation. His body-based approaches to structure, function, and the whole person are a true blending of art and science. We join him now in the summer of 2009 in San Diego at the Global Joint Treatment Class. Okay, bonjour, I'm Jean-Pierre Borel, so we, are, we will speak about, of course you know me, about visceral manipulation, but this course is about the joint manipulation. We see something very precise and specific, and of course it's very based on anatomy. Thank you for coming. So I repeat, and we will see something on the knee, and of course we have selected what is very important, and as you know, the medial meniscus is 20 times more affected than the lateral one. And very often there is what we call meniscus arthrosis. Okay, it's the meniscus is used, meniscus arthrosis. And it becomes a little thin, a little fragile, and it has a tendency not to go back when you have an extension. A lot of sportive have some knee problem. As I said yesterday, the problem with the knee is it has very solid bones, but it's very fragile. Every sportive that you can know, professional, have knee problem, okay? It's why it's, so, it's, it's important to know how to release. The knee, one if uh, there is a key word, proprioceptive system. It must be defined by a very acute proprioceptive system. There are many things which can affect the meniscus, which can affect the knee. A little tension we'll see on some active ligaments, like semimembranous, semitendinous, and so on, can disbalance this very fragile joint. We will see some techniques in order to release the meniscus step by step without hurting the patient, because we must avoid these strong techniques. So, the medial one has more problem. The entire part of the medial one has more problem, so we will focus on this part. And if you see that it's an entire view, of course, we'll try to see this, this part here. Okay? That is the most important part of the meniscus. So, very often what happens? The anterior horn of the menisc meniscus stays a little too much anterior, okay? and the patient cannot have the full extension. And very often he has a lack of full extension when you have some, somebody coming uh, in your office like it, okay? cannot uh, do some extension with the knee. Very often it's one of the techniques to do, it's not the only one we see, it's one of the techniques to do. D'accord? Alors, there is a lot of little movement of rotation of the knee. The knee, of course, is made for flexion, extension, but you have very uh, subtil some subtlety, five degrees of uh, rotation. And as I say, so when, when your knee, remember, when your knee, your leg is like it, your meniscus is in danger, okay? When you're here, it's not in danger, d'accord? Alors, I just want to explain again this problem of pressure. When you have a negative pressure, the cartilage glides very well because it's not stuck, okay? The two cartilages are gliding very well. And there is a, a liquid film between the two joints. There is a little liquid, okay, synovial liquid, which permit to glide. When you have a compression of the joint for any kind of reason, you have no more this liquid film, okay? and the cartilage will be less fed and so on because the small arteries are compressed, d'accord? And it's why when we try to do something, we try to restore a little this negative pressure. Uh, so you have a joint here, 
normally the joint glides. If you have too much pressure, it's, it's uh, of course you have no more the same pressure inside the, the, the joint. Huh? Increase the pressure and you have no more negative pressure. So the joint needs to have this negative pressure to be in a good shape. So you come and uh, you put your, your voila, here. I, I take the tibia, huh? I take the tibia here, okay? I put my two fingers here and I just try to see a little bit if there is some extension or not, okay? I just do this movement. And after you do a little rotation with the tibia and you see if the, you, allow the, you feel the meniscus, it's a little member like a cartilage just above the plateau and you try to see if fear is come back he is come back, okay? Extension, both must come back. If you have the feeling that there is something a little hard which stay underneath your fingers, it means there is a problem, d'accord? So, you stimulate a little bit the proprioceptive system, you do a little extension, and you come back. And with your fingers, you push a little bit like it, you push, you follow. What is important, you have five degrees of rotation here, and you follow these degrees, okay, and you can, and you do the movement, okay. You open a little bit, you open a little bit, you follow. You are doing the job, and myself, I just follow the meniscus and so on, okay, and you come back and so on, okay. That is the first thing. And at the end, I suppose that it's not, it's, you have somebody, you release and you try to, they steal something, okay. You ask the patient to put, the foot at this level, okay, what I said to you yesterday. You, t you catch the tibia here, you catch the femur at this level, move a little, make glide, uh, make glide your foot, slowly, 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 and you follow just the rotation with your hand, you come back, you follow the rotation, and you come back. And little by little, the patient will do himself the movement, okay? It, and the point for us is to have the full extension. I see, I'm speaking about somebody coming with your, uh, in your office with a big pain, a big tension, which cannot have some extension uh, on, the, on the foot. So it's very important is that, that kind of little rotation. You do it also, you do it, move. You move yourself, when you spend full, you come back. When you spend full, you come back, and so on. And we are more extension now, okay? Okay, good. And we are more extension. And your colleague will be the following. Alors, remember, you always, it's, uh, the problem of the, you know, the meniscus, they have a lot of proprioceptive fibers, okay? The, there are some neurons uh, inside the meniscus. Uh, it's not a stupid cartilage. And this cartilage gives some information, of course, uh, to balance a little the tension of the, of the muscle. Okay, so it's why you must always, even when somebody has nothing, be careful on the rotation. She has not uh, extended rotation and so on. D'accord? Alors, so last thing, you, ne you never have the weight of the patient of, on your shoulder. Huh? The weight is on this uh, leg at the beginning. Huh? Be careful because it's after you have a uh, uh, thoracic in that syndrome. Huh? <laughs>